All right. I don't think we've done a video from in here before. This is, well, it's my, my father's house actually. It's got shit everywhere. But that's the way he's always been. So guys, I want to welcome you back to another, yet another update video on this 30 day fat loss transformation that is now formed into a six week transformation. So that's not 30 days, that's 42 days. Today, we're on day 37, believe it or not. It's a Tuesday. What I've got is some groceries. So I thought before I got into any of the numbers we normally go through, I'm going to do something that I've talked about doing in the past in the previous videos, but I never did because I basically forgot about it. And honestly, you know, with the amount of times I've done a cutting or a bulking cycle, I, I can pretty much eyeball food. I know how many calories are in certain things. And as well as being able to eyeball food, I can also tell when my body is going through certain changes. And there's definitely certain changes that are starting to happen now as we enter our sixth week of dieting. So anyway, before we get into that, I'm going to show you guys a quick example of what I would normally pick up from the supermarket. Now these are foods I've used throughout this entire transformation and I will use throughout my entire life um, because a diet is not really a diet for me. A diet for me doesn't really change the foods that I eat. All it does is change the amount of the foods that I eat. So these are foods that I enjoy, a lot of them are good for you, a lot of them need preparing, unfortunately. Um, but I probably stick to around about the 80-20 rule when it comes to good and bad food. 80% of my food is pretty good, pretty healthy, wholesome, you know, whole foods. And 20% is processed and bought in a packet. Something full of sugar, full of fat, and probably full of sodium as well. So anyway, we've got a range of things here, and it includes things from both of those categories. So first of all, Let's go for some carb sources. I've got bread. We've got bagels. We've got flour because we do a lot of baking in this house. And I have been having some. Not a lot because we're on a diet, but I have been having some. Uh, bananas. Any kind of fruit. I've had kiwi fruit, apples, bananas, plums, but this week. I got bananas. Some soups. Now I go for a pumpkin soup. So this is three different types. I just looked at the macros on the back and they are totally different, all three. We've got three types. I mean, I do like the same kind of food, but you do try and mix it up when you can. So we've got soups. We've got another vegetable, a kumara, or a sweet potato, or a New Zealand sweet potato. Now I don't know if you'd include these in your carbohydrate sources. They don't include a huge amount of carbs, but they do include a, a huge amount of volume for the amount of calories that you consume. Now that is a fundamental, I guess, rule you could say behind my, my strategies when dieting. I not only intermittent fast throughout the first part of the day to reduce the amount of calories that I consume, but I'll also try and go for foods that are higher in volume just to make sure that I'm satiated or as satiated as possible, especially when it comes to going to sleep. I, I absolutely despise anything that interrupts my sleep pattern. And to be hungry going to bed is no good. But what I will say is that when you're dieting and you wake up hungry, that's a different story. That can be quite a rewarding feeling. But to do that, you have to be structured and disciplined on the day previous. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue to the protein sources. So today I have bought chicken kebabs. There's probably about 500 grams worth of chicken breast in each of these. I'll probably have one of these a day. That's about 100 grams of protein uh, within this. So this will last me for the next three days, which is good. As well as that, we've got some fish, which is extremely lean, extremely high in protein, and extremely disgusting unless you flavor it and cook it well. So that's, you know, that's a factor that you have to keep in mind when you buy things like this. Um, as well as that, we've got some bacon. Everyone likes bacon and eggs. And speaking of which, we've got eggs. So eggs could be seen as a protein source or a fat source. They basically got as much fat as, as protein in each egg, about five grams of each, depending on the size of the egg. And you could say the same about bacon. There's about as much fat in a piece of bacon with all the rind on it as there is protein. So that is a very low carb, but probably very high in saturated fat and sodium meal. Now, there's two other protein sources that I 
always buy every time I go to the supermarket and I've bought them this time as well. They do vary as far as the brand, as far as the flavour, but one of them is tuna, canned tuna. It's always an easy go-to protein source that you can stick in the cupboard and forget about it. And the other is some form of a protein bar. Now obviously, not every protein bar is nice. In fact, this one is one I've never tried before and that's the reason that I got it. It's got 18 grams of protein, 12 grams of fat, and two grams of carbohydrate. And that sounds like it might actually be quite nice. But I'll let you guys know. Anyway, that is the four protein sources, guys. We've got chicken, fish, tuna. Well, we've got chicken, white fish, uh, tuna, and a protein bar. Now, let's talk about fats. Okay, fats, I don't specifically go and buy, apart from, I guess, nuts. And apart from, I guess, using oil for my cooking. I do use oil when I cook my chicken, when I cook my, my fish. Gives it that nice crispy, you know, coating. And I guess also adds to your fat intake for the day. So oils throughout the day, you know, you've got oil and, and tuna. Butter in baking, butter on toast. I do have toast. Uh, I do have cheese at times. But today, the fat source that I bought specifically was peanut butter. And that's the brand we've got there. As far as drinks are concerned. <laughs> oh, you want to be on it? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so as far as drinks are concerned, especially throughout my fasting period in the morning, we're going for caffeinated beverages. And first off the block, as you probably well know by now, is coffee. So I've gone and bought some more. That is my choice of instant coffee. I'll always prefer a bought coffee, but it's just not worth it in these times. And so that's what we've got. As well as that, I go for my energy drink of choice, which is a V. So at the moment, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. There's absolutely no way in hell I'd ever have that. But in the morning, it's definitely a go. Now the V is clearly not sugar free. Uh, we are dieting, but like I said, I include the foods that I really enjoy, the foods and drink, drinks I enjoy. And if you're gonna have an energy drink and you're gonna have a V or a Red Bull and you go sugar free, Get the fuck out of my house. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about condiments and sauces. Hugely important when you're dieting. Absolute game changer. You know, for things like this fish, like I said, once you cook it, a little bit of oil plus, you know, a whole heap of your favorite seasonings, such as this one, and it's going to completely change the way it tastes for no extra calories. So it's definitely a game changer for me and something I've always got on hand because when I'm cooking protein sauces, when I'm cooking, you know, things like broccoli and cauliflower in the oven, when I'm cooking things like sweet potato. Hugely important to any successful diet is a good condiment and sauce selection. But try and make them low calorie. Anyways guys, that is about it for the food. Now I'm going to get into the stats. If you're still here, thanks very much. If you've fallen asleep, we'll wake the fuck up. And if you want to just see the progress pictures, we'll go to the end of the video because I know that most of you guys do that. But I've got some stats to run through with you first. Let's talk about the three variables that I'm tracking and that greatly alter the success or the failure of my diet. And they are sleep, steps, slash exercise, what exercise I've done, how many steps I've done per day, and how many calories I've burnt. Now calories are associated with steps because the more steps you do, the higher your heart rate gets throughout the day, the more calories you burn. But just to confirm, let's look at the numbers. But before we get into that, I do want to say just one thing. I want to, <laughs> I want to say that I, I am actually glad in a, in, a, in a way that we're in, into the final week. We're into the sixth week of the transformation. You know, I wouldn't want to extend it any longer than I have because for the last probably week and a half, I have been pushing quite hard because I do want a good result at the end of this. You know, there's no point in doing this, putting in all this effort, making these weekly videos if the result is not there. So I really have been, you know, punishing myself quite hard as far as calorie restriction goes for the past week and a half. And that has affected my performance. It's affected my, uh, my energy. It's Honestly, it's affected my sleep as well. At times, I feel like I'm, I'm waking up during the night when I probably wasn't during the first four weeks, or at least I didn't notice it. So things are probably starting to turn for the worse, you could say. If I was going to continue this diet to a bodybuilding stage, I'd be expecting these things. 
but it, clearly I'm not doing that and I've got a <laughs> I've got a life to live I've got to stay positive I don't want to feel like shit every day so it's time to turn it around it's time to go back in the gym it's time to smash the weights get the food up eat these things eat the same things but more of it and put on some muscle let's get into the stats okay so the way that the Fitbit app is structured as far as the back end it actually goes from Sunday to Saturday so it throws out the averages when I try and do them so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna run through every day as it is okay as far as sleep is concerned I'm gonna go Monday to Sunday 7 hours 47 8 hours 2 7 hours 21 7 hours 44 8 hours 42 10 hours 13 and 4 hours 29 for an average of around about eight hours a night and that's you know that as it like I said that's consistent but like you can see in the data I have woken up you know at least once for a couple of minutes per night and that sucks my worst night of sleep was Sunday night <laughs> I went to bed at 4 49 in the morning and I got up at 10 14 that was a total of four hours and 29 minutes now that is because I spent the night editing these draft videos so I hope you've enjoyed uh, my my best night of sleep was the night before and it's probably why I was, you know, able to stay up so long. Uh, I slept for 10 hours and 13 minutes, and I spent 11 hours and 50 minutes in bed in total. Now, as far as exercise and steps go, this past week was definitely my worst, um, definitely my laziest, and it's probably got something to do with the drop in energy. But as far as steps are concerned, Monday, 14,103. Tuesday, 14,876. Actually, sorry, no, that's wrong. See? It's fucked me up again. Monday, 14,876. So we started, we started well. Tuesday, 4,701. Wednesday, 11,019. Thursday, 8,581. Friday, 4,473. Saturday, 8,950. And Sunday, 5,143. For an average, I'm just gonna try and work this out in my head, of around about 8,000, 9,000, it's definitely not over 10. I guess that's pretty consistent with how I've been going so far, around about that 8,000 steps per day. Uh, the best day, like I said, was Monday, 14,876 steps, which was combined with a run. The only run that I did of the whole entire week was on the Monday, which I'm really disappointed to say, but uh, it is what it is. And on Friday, we had our worst day, which was 4,473. Now will that coincide with the calories burnt? Monday, we burnt 3,652. Tuesday, 2,693. Wednesday, 3,146. Thursday, 3,007. Friday, 2,617. Saturday, 3,306. And Sunday, 2,988. So the highest day is Monday, as we thought, with 3,652 calories. For an average per day, I'm going to do this in my head, but I feel like it's over 3,000. It's probably about 3,100 per day, which is not bad. Last thing I'll show you is the run. So I really tested myself. You know, I wanted to do a five kilometer run in under 25 minutes. I thought it was impossible. So I went out really, really slow. I probably did about a six and a half minute first kilometer, which is terrible. But from there, I was actually feeling really good and I started to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I started averaging a four and a half minute kilometer pace. And as it came down to the 25 minute mark, I was almost, you know, at five kilometers. And so I went as hard as I could, the hardest I've ever gone on a run that I can remember in that last K to try and get under 25 minutes. It didn't happen, but I pushed myself as hard as I could. And that's something I hadn't done for a while. So the statistics for that run I'm going to put on the screen now. We've got 5.01 kilometers, total time of 26 minutes, an average pace of 5.11 per K, and the fastest kilometer was 4 minutes and 32 seconds, which was the final K. And I'll tell you what, man, I've never been so close to throwing up in my life. Uh, we got our third fastest one kilometer, which was 4 minutes 30. So I've actually done two kilometer runs in the past that have been faster than that. Um, We've got a PR for a 5K, which is 25 minutes and 35 seconds. So that is my PR. We've got a PR for a two mile, which is 16 minutes and one second. A second fastest time for a mile, which is seven minutes, and 47 seconds. I mean, this is off the app Strava. Strava is amazing. I absolutely love it. And anyone that's into running or cycling or walking or hiking 
or anything, what I'd actually recommend is downloading this app if you're not into exercise because what it might do is actually motivate you to because it definitely motivates me to when I don't want to. So anyways, that's it. We're going to show you the progress pictures now. Anyone that's skipped to this point, uh, thank you so much. You've just missed about 15 minutes of me going on and on and on about this transformation. But if you do want to know anything about my diet, if you do want to know anything about my diet, the way that I've constructed things... Holy shit, there's a helicopter in the room. Um, do you want to finish off the video or...? Yeah, okay. Oh, they're not even... They're actually, they can't see you at the moment because the progress pictures are on screen. But they'll be able to see you now. So anyways, this is my sister. She embarked on the same transformation at the beginning of lockdown and lasted how long? Uh, probably about two minutes. No, literally, probably like, what, three days? Well, I lasted on the exercise bandwagon, but not on the calorie deficit yeah, bandwagon. Yeah, so, you know, Anna can, can take this and take it to the kitchen and, and create some, some baking masterpiece that like, like, like she has done throughout this whole entire time, yet I can only eat one piece. But this transformation is almost over, guys. I want to thank you so much for being here. Train hard, eat well. You know, that's what I used to say on this channel when it was just to do with bodybuilding and nothing else. I used to say, train hard, eat well, and I'll see you in the next one. So that's what we're going to say. Peace out, guys. See you next week.